so we obviously we made a, a deal uh, yesterday, uh, last night, and uh, first thing I'd like to do is thank Bobby and Jabari. Uh, obviously, Bobby was a uh, instrumental part of organization and our, our whole group. You know, just uh, we loved the kid. He, he was, you know, he loved being here and. and he appreciated being a, a Chicago Bull, and we appreciated having him. So it, it's always difficult to see guys like that go. Um, but in the process, we were able, in our minds, make a deal where we added a player that kind of fits our timeline, uh, 25 years old, fits a position that we've been looking for uh, and has versatility in terms of the way the game's going. Otto Porter is a guy that we, we believe can play three slide over to four, it'll give our, our coaching staff options in terms of his versatility, especially when Chandler comes back in the lineup. So for, for us, this was, again, consistent with the, the direction we chose, and we feel really good about it. We're, 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 uh, we're going to stay committed to the long term and, and what we're trying to, to build with some sustainability, and we feel Otto fits that, uh, that mold. So um, with that said, I know you guys have a lot of questions for us. Well, I, I can let Gar speak to these things because Gar, Gar did. Uh, Gar's the one who speaks to all the teams and the general managers, and uh, um, you know, I can tell you as an organization, you know, you, you keep your eye on players all around the league. So, but but Gar can talk more about the the details. I don't know. There, there's there's always dialogue, you know, 12 months a year, and uh, whether it's on the phone or you're seeing guys out scouting, you know, at summer league, at GM meetings, wherever it is. So. Um, like in Otto's situation, we, we've expressed interest several times in him over the last year, I would say, uh, both Ernie and uh, Tommy Shepard, who's uh, his assistant. So it's interesting just in doing so by, by showing interest. We never got into any really serious talks. But by doing so, when they made the decision, um, because I'd even read as of a week ago where they, they had said their ownership had come out and said they weren't going to make moves and they weren't going to trade anybody. And obviously they made a decision for whatever reason that's going on there that they were going to explore moving him, that, that they called us, and that's where the talks got started. Gar, what do you think was the failure in scouts, Jabari Parker, and bringing him here, mm -hmm. seeing that whether he showed up to shape, not to shape, uh, defensive coordinator? I mean, where was the breakdown of what you guys were looking at and what you actually got? Yeah. And, do you, and do you view him as a mistake? Well, you know, where we're at, and, and again, and just, you know, at that point we were a year into a rebuild. Now we're a year and a half into a rebuild. And, you know, obviously we need to continue to add talent to this roster. And we need to add young talent to this roster. And what we saw in Jabari was a guy who's 23 years old and, and had talent. And um, sometimes the pieces don't fit exactly right. And obviously there were some struggles with Jabari. He had some really good games for us, but there were some struggles with him also. Um, the, I think the key thing that as John and I were looking at it was in looking at trying to go out and get a talented player that it was going to be a short-term commitment. And you hope for the best. And if it's not working out, you're not locked in long-term. And in essence, it's, it's what we saw yesterday. Uh, it wasn't working, obviously, with Jabari the way – I think he would have liked it to work in the way we would have liked it to work. Um, but the fact that we had that contract, and it was a, basically an expiring contract, enabled this trade to happen and, and for us to address what we think is a real need to get a, a, a young, talented three-man and, and fill a need. So um, I don't know if that specifically answers your question, but it, it, it turned out, I think, as a positive for the Bulls. And I think Jabari's going to go to a situation in Washington um, where they're excited, you know, to have him as they make a playoff push. You know, we, we accept responsibility for all the moves we make. We, we thought at the time it was worth the roll of the dice, given where we're at. Um, and you know, it, it didn't it didn't work out for either party. And uh, that that's sometimes it happens. But uh, you know, it, it's it it has allowed us, as Gar said, to to make a move that we were happy with. Do you have to reevaluate how you're scouting guys and what you're looking for? I mean, you you've been doing this. Yeah, I, I, I like our process, and we've got a veteran staff, scouting staff, 
uh, I like the processes that we go through. I think w when you look around the NBA um, and you evaluate, you know, drafts and, and guys that you pick up, you're going to see that there, there's hits and there's misses. And um, if you really, and I'm going to defend our scouting staff here, uh, if you really dig deep as far as how we've drafted, for instance, over the last 10 years, and the analytics will prove this, that, that we have drafted very, very well. So I, I like our staff, like our process, and obviously scouting is going to be a huge, huge part uh, of what we're doing today and what we're doing moving forward. You know, when we started this rebuild, uh, the draft is so, so critical. And, you know, we feel that Lowry, we've got a young player that's going to be a part of our core for a long time. I think in Wendell, we've got a young player that's got all kinds of promise. I think uh, he's just scratching the surface of what he can become. Now, you know, obviously we're going to have a high pick this year, and this draft's going to be critical to us. And, and we'll also... You know, we talked about yesterday's trade. The other part of that is when we moved Justin and, and got two picks, two second-round picks that, that have a chance to be good picks from Memphis. Um, to us, that's another opportunity. When you're, when you're drafted in the 30s, our feeling is you have an opportunity to get a player that's going to be able to be a piece and be able to help you. And this wasn't a scouting process issue. The, the, the Jabari issue, that's our responsibility. We, we make that decision to, to sign him and bring him on. So, But, again, it, it short-term and – you know, you, we we've learned you know we learned from we made a deal uh, last night that, that we feel long term helps us. Our intention we haven't really discussed anything. I know that there's a lot of talk and, and rumor around the league about buyouts. Um, we have not spoken about that internally as an organization. The more the, the discussions we have had center around the whole buyout process in general. And in a lot of ways, it, it hurts the trade market when there's all this, you know, belief that guys are going to be bought out. Uh, I, I certainly think it hurt us in this case. And so we are not committed to anything right now. And I, my feeling right now is, Robin, it can change. No doubt that Robin will be with us. Uh, we don't see any reason. He's, our, our players love him. He's a, he's a great teammate. He's a good guy. Uh, so we don't feel – it necessary, and, and again, I'm speaking today. Yeah. A lot can change, but we don't we don't feel it's it's an absolute given that we have to just buy a guy out to help another team. And just sort of that you got a chance to play in the Devils' advocate for a second, given all this news, you know, coming through Portland, where you guys played for the first time in Portland last night. Do you get the impression that the Hartford Trail in general is more than a place to meet and have some camaraderie with the players and the fans? We'd have discussion, but but you know, also players. Sign contracts, and they're under under contract, and that's not. Look, we we have great respect for Robin. I mean, he's, you know, he, he's a really interesting guy, you know, and, and and we've loved having him around, and he's been good for our team. Uh, but players go in and sign deals, and so when you're under contract, you're under contract. John, given the lottery changing steps over the next couple of years, does that alter your team's intentions in any way going forward? Well, we were going before the trade. We were looking at having some cap space this year in the range of about $40 million. Uh, this, this cuts that in half. We are realistic in terms of what the free agent market is. We were not going to be – we're not in the position as of today to be in the position to go after the, the big names, the, the, the franchise changers. We're just not – you know, we're looking at things realistically. We also looked ahead to next this, – this summer and even the summer beyond, looked at available wings and versatile players and – you know, the list is what it is, no guarantees of, of getting players like that. We thought that this was a, a perfect opportunity to get a player like Otto. He, is, he, is he making a lot of money? Of course he is. A lot of players in our league are making a lot of money. Um, and it does take away some of that cap space. But we, we also felt that, you know, we, we tried to re-sign Bobby this past offseason. We, we made him a, an offer that, that he turned down, which is his right. As we evaluate our team, we looked at having Larry Markinen as our starting four, Wendell Carter as our starting five for hopefully many, many years. Uh, to invest a lot of money right now at this time in, in somebody who, who, as much as we love Bobby, at a position that was going to be a backup for us, when we knew we could get a, a starting small four, that, that made more sense to us than, than anything. So we, we'll look at uh, the, the 
free agent market this summer. Our, our intention, our goals will be to, we're going to have a, a high draft pick. We have a second round pick. And with the money we have available, we want to address the veteran players that we feel can fit the team and help our young players along. That's been the challenge with, uh, with, the, with the rebuild, is, is finding the right veterans, the guys that can play a role and lead in the locker room. Uh, and even though Otto's 25 and, and a quiet guy, he has been in the league six, year, six years and has had success, so we'll, we'll see how he does. But um, the, the cap space issue for us, it, it just made sense because we knew we're, we're realistic knowing we're not going to be huge players in terms of the big names. I just, I think I just answered that. I, I, we, right now, this, we're not at a position right now where we have, you know, we believe we can do that. We, that's where, that's where we're aspiring to. Every, every organization is at a, you know, at a different point in their, you know, in their cycle as a team. You know, we're, we're at a very beginning point of a rebuild. We're, we're still very positive of the direction we're ch we've chosen. We understood going into this that it would be really hard and at times painful. This year's probably been more painful than we thought. Uh, just given when we started day one, you know, you guys know, you're here. You know, we, we were healthy, we were excited, you know, those type of things. Th those things have changed over time. And when our guys have been together, we, you know, candidly, we, we probably haven't played at the level that, you know, we would hope. But with that said, over the last two, three weeks, we're seeing some signs. We're not winning games, but we're seeing some signs of offensive improvement, which is good. But, you know, we, we have to sit here every day and, and say to ourselves, and be honest, we are a young basketball team. It's very difficult to win in this league as a young team, but we, we are committed to the, the, the plan. We're committed to adding another young player in this draft that we, you know, you, you hope will be an impact player to go along with the guys we have. Uh, and now, when after this trade, we feel that we've got a, a, a starting two in Zach, a very athletic starting two, guy who's putting up offensive numbers. In Otto, we have a... a, a consistent three-point shooter that in this league. He's been at 40% for his career um, as our three. And now we've got Lowry and Wendell, and we still are evaluating Chris Dunn. And the rest of this year, for the good or the bad, is letting Chris Dunn play, get experience, and and keep trying to become the player that he wants to become, that we, we feel. And, and it's all about the decisions we're going to make going forward and, and what happens these last 27, 28 games. But don't you think that the kind of the black guy No, no, not not at this time. We're we're trying to get there. We we were, hey, we were part of the deal years ago when when uh, you know when we when LeBron and those guys were out, we we didn't get them, but we were part of that process then. Okay, we were in the game, as New York will be in the game, I'm sure this summer. We are not at that stage. Does it is it a black eye? No, uh, no, I, I don't uh, I don't consider it that. That's our aspiration. We've understood that the process we're in right now is is tr hoping to get to that point and but we also believe that the draft is very important in order to, to build to get to there and that's that's why we are sitting here you know a year and a half after trading jimmy with larry markin and wendell carter out of the draft another high draft pick coming up and uh time will tell time will tell but i'm confident in our ability to get there because we've we've done it before and uh and we understand that it, as painful as it is for us, our fans, everybody else, that we have to remain patient and, and continue c consistently making the decisions we're making. John, how would you assess the job of uh, Jim Boylan and Seth? Jim, Jim is, you know, the, the thing is, there's, as we learn all the time, you know, when you're in it every day with somebody, you find out who they are. And the one thing we're really pleased about, and we talked to Jim about because we're such a young team, is just the, the teaching component of the game to our guys consistently every day. Um, you know, the, the early, that first week with the, the whole Boston game and, the, you know, that, that, that was a bad way to start. But when you're in it with him every day, you see his passion, commitment, and the care he has for his players and our organization. So we're, we're, uh, we feel he's, he's doing the right things. And 
he's trying to get our guys to understand what being a professional is and to play hard every night so and to practice hard every day so it's we're, we're uh you know we're we're doing we're doing fine with jim jim's been great in terms of communicating with uh every single day so it, it we're on, we're on a good page there malika you had a question Well, it's not. It, I'm, I'm not going to get into specific things. It's, uh, you know, point guard position is a, it's a critical position. It's a tough one to play. You have to be a leader. You have to be a distributor. You have to be a scorer. That's what uh, the position requires. Um, it will be interesting to see now, as we've added uh, another legitimate wing in Otto, how Chris handles that role with scores, um, and and we're excited about that. We'll, we'll see. I. We, we've said all along that this process is about learning who fits, who doesn't. Um, we, we, we still like Chris a lot. I mean, he's had some ups and downs this year in terms of his consistency, and uh, that, that's always a challenge for players, uh, uh, being consistently uh, efficient in your game at all positions, but especially the point guard position is, is something that all teams value, and, and we're, still, we're still taking a, a long look at Chris. We, but we, we like him. He's, he's been competitive. He can still defend, um, and, and, he's, and he's playing hard. So we, we, we're going to keep evaluating him. No one knows that. I mean, we can't. We can't. I can't pinpoint on a calendar and say by next year or whatever. I, I. I think we're all realistic in that. As we get through the rest of this year, and our expectations that our Jim and his staff continue to coach our guys hard and, and our guys keep trying to get better and try to start winning some games when they, you know, if we can. Uh, but we we're, we know that next summer is a big summer for us, like last summer was in terms of the draft primarily, and then realistically trying to find some vets that fit the group we have. And that's part of what we evaluate now. We, we're evaluating the, the personalities of our guys, w who might fit with them. And uh, so we, we understand that's, that's ahead of us. But to, to pinpoint a time, you just don't know. Can I add to that? Yeah. Cody, I, I think um, where we're at, you know, like I, I know people want instant gratification. We understand that. You know, we've got – we do also. And I think John mentioned, you know, as you start off, you know, in this first couple of years of a rebuild, it's very pain – it's painful for us. We know it's painful for our, our fans. Um, but you're not going to snap your fingers and it all happens at once. It, it's got to be a process, a step-by-step -step process. And, and that's where I think what you're emphasizing, what I would say, you know, we've got to piece this – together and continue to make progress and in doing so that's where you know getting Wendell getting Lowry uh, the trade that we made that gave us you know a some key players you know including Lowry this is a big step for us I feel to get Otto Porter um, because he fits and in doing so we've also got to remain flexible and we do have a level of flexibility this summer into the following summer and that doesn't just mean signing you know signing the star free agent, we've seen that having flexibility can give you the ability to acquire people via trade, uneven financial trades. It's part of the reason that Otto Porter now, who's a 25-year-old starting three, who's been very, very efficient and effective in his career, I mean, the analytics, you know, it just blow him away, you know, people that study that. But we've liked him as a player since college. And, and that's where the draft now in, in using some money this this summer and continue to, to, to add pieces to this. Sorry, you guys have been very much like Liberty in terms of getting together with the conference play. We do. Do you guys, do you guys need some players in the buyout market or do you know you have plenty of young people? Well, if, 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 if we were, I think it would be more to take a look at a young guy that, that we're intrigued with and give them a look, something like that. Okay. Yeah. John, you mentioned um, um, the Patriots give out Jimmy Moyle. And obviously this is just as it relates to Jimmy Moyle, just to say something. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because I think people still think that he may be leaving and he was still dressed for this year, but that was a call for him to sit out the year. But in your guys' mind, that's not even on the table. No. Uh, not, uh, sitting here today, we, we have every intention. And um, like I said, we're, we're working well together. Uh, our objectives are the same. Um, we All of us would like to, you know, especially at our home four, we'd love to show our fans, you know, when last night, you know, it's disappointing you don't win that game. But uh, Jim, Jim's doing the right things, and he's 
from our seats to each promoting the right message to our players and what we expect and what we want. A question for you, a question for you gentlemen. Obviously, you've been against the trade with Washington and the Jays. What do you say in general about the specifics that any other of these teams were interested in either Jabari or Bobby? Oh, yeah, we, we had conversations, you know, with a lot of teams, and I know that's the, the standard. But there, uh, you know, uh, Bobby was really liked throughout the league. Um, like John said, we love him. We love Bobby, and uh, and that's why we offered him the extension that we did in, in the fall. Um, and that's that's what's really tough when it, when it comes down to trades. You know, we looked at Bobby, who we love, but we've got started young starters at four and five, and now we've got an opportunity to get a starting three that fits the timeline and how we want to play. Um, but there was a lot of interest there, and there was interest in Jabari. You know, not on a on a great level, but but people were intrigued by him, and, and we had a number of conversations. Um, in regards to both those guys. John, why do you view the, uh, the Royals strategy as being different? Well, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to get into, you know, kind of day-to-day personal things. I, I, I know that Zach is a, an incredibly talented player. Um, Jim is an incredibly competitive coach and person. Uh, we need Zach. He, he's got a unique ability to score the basketball. Uh, you need guys like that. Um, that is part of... A, Coaching and coach-player relationships can be difficult on any level. You know, I mean, I played for the greatest greatest coach of all time, and sometimes relationships with players were him and players with him were, were not always, you know, smooth. That's not to say there's anything going on with Zach and, and Jim. I, Jim, Jim, one of Jim's great strengths is his constant communication with players. He does not lie to them. He tells them the truth. And Zach is a player that wants to be great, who has a lot – a lot of ways to grow, which is exciting, you know, for, for both sides. So, you know, Jim, Jim's doing what he thinks he has to do as a head coach. Uh, you know, I mean, Jim sits down with Zach frequently and shows him film. They talk about the game, what Zach can do better to, to, to improve, those, those type of things. That, that, that's a, you have, as a head coach, you have to be willing to confront and talk the truth to players. Um, and, and Jim does that. So, and he does it in a way that's, you know, very professional. I, I think you'd be hard pressed to find players that would ever say that Jim doesn't care about them and wants the best for them. That's that's how he treats them. What would be some examples you would have? Well, no, no, give me a couple because that, that's why, Curtis. I mean, there's. What's that? Yeah, that to me the the biggest difference is um, again Otto Porter is a 25 year old player that uh, has been a high high level three point shooter. He, he's produced very efficiently in his career. He's still only 25. Um, it's a two year commitment. Um, you know, I think those things can defend, can shoot, been very efficient, uh, assist to turnover ratio, doesn't turn the ball over. Uh, he's a talented, young, productive player, and that's why that's why I asked you for examples. I, Brandon Knight, I don't he, because of his injuries and those things. I think it's been different. Um, it wasn't like Washington was trying to get off of Otter Porter's salary. Right, right. Houston was trying to get off of Brandon Knight's salary. So you you have to, you have to incentivize those type of things. Um, as t- in terms of the draft pick, and, and this is where I think you know it's it's hard. It, it don't, I don't expect people, none of us do, to understand the business full force, but every team has their objectives and goals. One of Washington's objectives and goals yesterday was to get out of the tax, plain and simple. We knew that as we were talking about the deal. They are devoid of picks, second-round picks going forward. If, if you watched, what they did after our deal was they used the pick we gave them to move Marquise Morris to get them out of the tax. So this deal may not have happened had we not done that. So I know it's very easy to sit there and – you know, critique everything, you know, as saying, you know, but we have added second round picks to our, you know, over the next four years, we have five second round picks. We believe several of them are going to be very good. So we, we do things that if we feel we have to make a deal or want to make a deal and that's what it takes, that's what we're going to do. And that's what we did yesterday. There was, there wasn't a one-on-one, there wasn't a deal we could do that got them what they, what they were, one of the things they were trying to accomplish, which was get out of the tax that we could do directly with them. Right. Well, 
Well, not, no, 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 I didn't say, I said they were, that wasn't their objective. Their objective was not to just get off auto port. Right. We couldn't do a one-on-one -on -one deal. We couldn't do a one-for-one. One. It's too, it's, we couldn't do a one-for-one one deal with them, okay, in terms of just getting them out of the tax just separately. We had to do something extra so they could then move a marquee from Morris to get out, okay? So. Right. You can answer that one. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, obviously there's going to be opportunities in the draft, and, and you don't know where you're picking, who's available. And as you guys know that have covered us for a long time, you know, we're going to take who we feel the best talent, the best player, or the best fit for us is. Um, but it's not like we're sitting here today. You know, we still have a lot of a lot of holes to fill. And so when we have an opportunity to fill one of those holes, uh, we did so with the trade yesterday. And you know, we obviously we need more talent and more depth. And 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 thus, looking ahead to the draft wasn't a huge consideration when we can do a deal that we feel addresses a need today with a young player. No, nothing. Well, we, you know, that, that we, we can't control perception, Darnell, and I will say this again, the only people who really know are those of us in the building, and I know that everyone has their, their you know, their contacts and they talk to people, but um, it has nothing to do with money. That, that's your question, that it has nothing to do with money. So. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks.